Thank you. Thank you for your time. All right. We are now moving on to the California Public Utilities Commission, CPUC, Commission Accountability. Um, there were some, oop, I don't understand this right here. Yes. Utilities. Senator Pavley, we've had a request um, uh, to hold open the May revision proposal items, the trailer bill changes only. Uh, that have to do with the new Solar Homes Partnership right. Program, the net metering, and the interconnection dispute resolution. So the recommendation will be to hold to open uh, those items. But the recommendation is also to, to, to adopt, uh, to uh, agree with the assembly actions, correct? All right, one moment, I have to, one moment. Okay, um, there will be a split vote and I was trying to be certain that I had picked it out correctly. Welcome. Thank you. You're on. Um, good afternoon, Chair Wolk, Senators. Um, thank you for the opportunity to appear today. I'm Michelle Cook, Deputy Executive Director at the California Public Utilities Commission. I wanted to, uh, to focus on one part of the staff recommendation and then I can address individual aspects as, as needed, um, as you might expect. The, one that I would like to focus on is the rec recommendation to uh, reduce the state uh, operations budget for the CPUC by $5 million. Um, this is actually equivalent to a $10 million, hit, $10 million hit on our budget. Um, frankly, I have no exact idea on how we will cover our costs with this cut. Um, we are already taking a hit with a $5 million contract that we didn't plan for and do not want. <laughs> Um, but we have really no choice to ent but it to enter into. The funding for that is coming from travel and training and other contracting that we're deferring, as well as personnel savings due to vacant positions in the normal course of business. This is tough to handle, but it is spread over two years, which helps to blunt the impact in any given year. We are making um, those sacrifices so that we can ensure the investigators get full cooperation in their investigations, and so our employees that are called as witnesses are represented. We must do this to support our employees and ensure a full and fair investigation occurs. But hitting us with an additional $5 million reduction on top of us already taking on this unplanned cost is really not absorbable. After removing our day-to-day -day operating costs like rent and costs associated with keeping the IT infrastructure and basic services running, our operating budget has very little to spare. There is only about $3 million left after these day-to-day -day costs are removed. Most of that $3 million is, uh, of the operating budget is set aside for contracting that was approved in previous BCPs and travel and training for our safety staff. If we cut all of those costs to handle the hit, uh, we will be unable to have our inspectors in the field uh, or accomplish our statutory obligations. We will not be able to represent California ratepayers before federal agencies, perform audits at utility facilities, investigate railroad or pipeline incidents, or inspect rail facilities as required by statute and federal law. Our only alternative to using the operating budget will be to ensure that at least $5 million is available from our personnel budget to cover a $5 million hit. Uh, to do so, we will very likely have to hold positions open in the hopes of salary savings. Uh, this will mean that we will not be in a position to hire staff to fulfill new legislative mandates or replace our staff when they leave for higher paid positions at other federal, municipal, and private entities, which they're doing primarily in the safety and engineering fields. Um, I recognize that you want to punish the CPUC, um, but this hit punishes Californians by making it impossible for us to perform our duties especially in the area of safety. 
It punishes our employees who have no fault in the ongoing investigations. So please do not do this. All With right. that, I'm happy to answer any questions. All right. Uh, I take issue with your concern, uh, your, your uh, statement about punishing okay. um, CPUC. Uh, that's not how we're approaching this. That isn't how we're approaching toxic substances control um, or dogger. But there are serious problems and, you know, the buck stops here. This is the money. And sometimes um, accountability, it's ratepayer money, and it's really important that uh, people have a sense uh, that, that things are being well run. Um, and, you know, that hasn't been the case. I mean, for the past two years at least, um, I don't want to read any more about the CPUC in the newspaper. I want to read all good things. We would like And I know you do too, and I know there are many employees that feel that way. Um, this is not, um, I think a lot of this oversight uh, is really critical to that. So that's why it's being put forward in that way. So um, with that, further comments, uh, LAO? Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, if I may, maybe I'll just spend just a minute. Uh, I'm not gonna rehash um, our analysis of the zero-based budget document that we did earlier, but I, I feel like a few of the comments that we made in there may um, help inform sort of some of the, the staff recommendations here and provide some information on those. Okay. Um, the, what we found from the analysis was that essentially what the uh, administration provided didn't really provide much analysis of the existing level of resources and whether or not they are appropriate or allocated in an effective way. And so um, I think one of the re key recommendations we made out of that analysis was uh, for the, the legislature to be more specific about its goals and expectations about any future analysis that it wants from the PUC. Um, for example, it could be an analysis of whether the amount of resources is appropriate or whether the allocation is appropriate or whether there are particular activities that may uh, be better uh, administered somewhere else. Um, and so I think uh, as you sort of consider the recommendation for the California Research Bureau to look into the operations of PUC, you, you keep that in mind about trying to be as specific as possible and that would help perhaps uh, focus that analysis on issues that may be of highest priority for you, um, you would potentially be able to get a, a more timely analysis, perhaps a more thorough in-depth analysis of the highest priority issues and perhaps even a less costly analysis. Okay. You saw the recommendation as to the items that are called out. Do you think that's not general, that's too general and ought to be more specific? Um, I, I, the way the language reads there, it, it seems that it's, it's pretty broad. Uh, it's calling for a very broad analysis over the entire operations of the PUC. All right. um, and it's a very big agency that has a lot of, a lot of operations. And so um, to the extent you can sort of uh, identify sort of the, the key areas, perhaps it's a particular division that you're interested in or a particular type of activity that you're most interested in that might, might help um, uh, result in a, a sort of more meaningful analysis for you. And uh, on the proposed trailer bill uh, items that are in there, um, our recommendations on those um, first, each of those proposals may have some merit. However, it's not clear um, why they need to be adopted through the budget process. Neither one of them has a budget change associated with them, and it may be more appropriate for the legislature to consider them through the policy process. All right. I think we're going to hold those open. Sure. Let those move through. All right. Further um, discussions? At the Madison Department of Finance, and I'd just like to reiterate that the $5 million cut could have adverse effects on the PUC and their workforce. All right, and we do have a mechanism for that, which uh, is as if you can submit a deficiency if you have unexpected expenses. So you may be forced to do that. All right, um, anyone, any further comments? Any uh, public comment on this item? Come forward. You can, that's being held open, but you're welcome to uh, speak briefly to it. Uh, there's a mic over there. Yeah, welcome. Thank you, Madam Chair and Senators. I'm Bob Raymer, representing the California Building Industry Association, and I've also been asked to uh, say a me too on behalf of the Solar uh, Energy Industries Association. Uh, CBI is a strong supporter of the new Solar Home Partnership Program. Uh, I can tell you that uh, 
I know that uh, the question has been raised, uh, it should be more appropriate for a policy committee as opposed to budget trailer language. Uh, the last, uh, this is the third update in budget trailer language that I've uh, worked with, one in 2012, one in 2014, and then this year. Uh, I can also tell you the two changes uh, being proposed are rather urgent. Uh, the one clarification that the CEC would remain as the administrator of the program uh, is, is quite important. Uh, since the CEC took over the administration from the utilities a year ago, we've seen the application uh, timeline for submittals on this uh, drop from three and a half months to one month. So obviously the CEC's administration of New Solar Home has worked out very well. We're also very concerned that uh, even though this is a, uh, an incredibly successful program for the new residential construction industry, uh, and even though there's uh, remaining $145 million in authorized funding, Right now, we stand to run out of funding by the end of the third quarter or sometime in the fourth quarter of this year. I've got to tell you that we've got major builders who have started incorporating solar as a standard feature as opposed to the option. They're now asking home buyers, how much solar do you want as opposed to do you want solar? And it wouldn't have happened had it not been for this program. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Uh, I see people standing up, so come forward quickly. Um, use the mic. You can use on either side. Thank you, Chair and members. Uh, Nick Pappas with Southern California Edison. Recognizing that the proposal is to hold open uh, the budget language 816, I want to be very brief. Just want to register our opposition and great concerns about that language. Uh, should the committee wish to move forward with that at a later date, we're happy to work with them on our concerns, but we think it should remain held open. Uh, I only want to point out that this bill, the very similar language was in a previous bill last year, AB 2649, and to my knowledge, the one and only legislative action on this language was to strike it immediately from the bill that later moved through. Uh, happy to work with the committee on this further and appreciate the recommendation today. Thank you. I don't yeah, I'm sorry, that's uh, the net metering budget proposal. Thank you. Okay. okay. Yeah. All right, welcome. Good afternoon, Madam Chair and committee members. Davina Flemings on behalf of Pacific Gas and Electric Company. Um, I want to echo the comments raised by my colleague at Edison. Um, we strongly oppose the um, trailer bill language uh, regarding uh, NEM for the military. Um, we believe this proposal would potentially um, shut out uh, customer, other residential customers who would like to uh, participate in the NIM program. So um, we at PG&E work very closely with the military to um, help them with their DG installations and in um, finding suitable solutions that will help further their, uh, their uh, clean energy goals. And so um, we would recommend that you reject this proposal. Thank you. Okay, thank you. More uh, Tamara, public comment? Welcome. Yes, thank you, Madam Chair. Tamara Raspberry, representing San Diego Gas and Electric, um, also concurrence with my colleagues from the, my sister utilities. And our concern is that the trailer, that this trailer bill language clearly circumvents the policy process and raises significant policy concerns, one being that the um, it appears to benefit federal government and not federal government military bases and not to military personnel. And though the trailer bill um, appears to attempt to apply the NEM 1.0 rules to the federal government's buildings, it could set up a situation that allows the federal government to avoid paying costs um, that other NIM 1.0 customers do pay. And ironically, some of those could be non-military customers or as well as military personnel who live off base. And at a minimum, the trailer bill should require the federal government to pay for all system upgrade costs and technologies required for the safe and reliable operation of the utility system. Thank you. Thank you. My, thank you. My name is Janice Lynn. I'm the executive director of the California Energy Storage Alliance. We represent um, all forms of energy storage developers, renewable developers, and even fossil fuel developers, a very large contingency of our membership of approximately 100 companies is involved in developing distributed energy resources. And I'm here today to strongly support the trailer built language for the interconnection dispute function. Um, this, this particular function um, addresses the ability for distributed energy resources to be interconnected to the grid more efficiently and supports the plug and play vision that this um, the legislature has supported in the past. So just very briefly, um, 
Why is that the case? Currently, uh, developers of distributed resources need to file an interconnection application with utilities. Utilities are the sole gatekeeper in approving these interconnection applications, and there's currently tremendous latitude in both the timing and the fees on how they approve this. There are many cases. Um, I can give you one example where one developer was charged $7,000 to review a single document. Now, there is very little to no recourse today for such developers to dispute such fees or timing. Um, there is an interconnection ombudsman, but that individual works for the utility, so it's akin to putting the hen, uh, the fox in charge of the hen house. So creation of this strategic function will enable a leaner, meaner uh, <laughs> process for resolving disputes and, and will likely uh, reduce costs for all ratepayers. Thank, so, thank you. We don't need to discuss the... Uh... Um, the substance here. This is being held open and being moved forward. Yeah. Ned McKinley with the Marine Corps on the, uh, the budget trailer language for net energy metering. Just a, a little bit of context I want to provide. Um, in the case of the Marine Corps energy security strategy that we're implementing, a number of challenges we faced in the state. Um, some of these on interconnection, some of these in terms of the uh, discussion on net energy metering in terms of a subsidy or an incentive. In the case of the Marine Corps, I think we're far from it being a subsidy. Camp Pendleton is, a, for example, is a base with about 80,000 daytime population, 44 megawatt peak load. We can net meter a little bit at Camp Pendleton. And the rest of that generation, everything we're trying to do for our energy security strategy, we actually get penalized for that. Um, so the impact of the trailer language, it's a definitional change that would allow us to redefine a few more premises on there. The net effect would be net metering a few more, uh, a little bit more on our basis. I don't think it'd be a whole lot. An important point to make, we wouldn't be exporting. We are not exporting now on our basis with one exception, and we're in the process of switching out of net metering, working with Southern California Edison on it. So this would not result in any net exports. Um, and I just want to say, I mean, I think we have great partnerships with the state agencies, also with utilities. It certainly concerns me of what they're saying today. Um, I can give the full commitment to the Marine Corps. We are working with them in many cases, and we will continue to do so. Implementing this, if there are metering requirements, there shouldn't be for exporting, but if there are metering requirements or how we are defining premises, absolutely will work in, in close cooperation with utilities. Um, and then just the last point. I don't think you need to convince us of the policy. Okay. And just the last point. Right there. It, 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 we've talked about this for a while. <laughs> okay. Thank you, ma'am. Very good. Thank you. Briefly. <clears throat> Chair Randall Friedman, on, on behalf of Navy Region Southwest, I'll take your cue and just be very short. Um, I know you've been a big supporter and we've worked with you in the past on the community solar. We view, we're very grateful that the governor's office has put this in. We think that it is a very fine um, technical correction to a five-year standing problem. A military installation, whether it's Travis in your district, Beale and Senator Nielsen's, our naval base Ventura, which Senator Pavley represented for many years. These are small cities, not single business enterprises. We think this is a technical correction to premise that is appropriate. It's non-policy and it will open the door for literally thousands of homes occupied by military families to get the same green energy that families on the other side of our fence can get. Thank you. Yes. Madam Chair, Member Shane Levine on behalf of Solar City, uh, we are in strong support of the governor's proposal. Um, we, we do have to respectfully disagree uh, that this is a, and I'll make it brief, a, a, a policy issue. Net energy metering has been settled. It is in statute. Uh, there are ongoing difficulties, understood. However, we're asking that the military and military families be able to operate within existing law. That's it. They're a customer generator like everybody else. Uh, and to the point quickly about federal subsidies and we would be federalizing the federal government, an important point needs to be made once again that, in fact, we would be... Uh, be the recipients of a federal tax credit that is due to expire in 2016 that makes these projects feasible now. Uh, and that's the urgency. So with that, we support this language. Thank you. Thank you. Rob Welcome. Oglesby, Rob Oglesby Energy Commission, just to return to the New Soil Homes program again, because you're bouncing on multiple issues. I wanted to go on record saying that the Energy Commission is indeed interested in continuing to administer this program. And without that trailer bill provision, it would revert to the investor-owned utilities. Thank you very much. All right. Uh, further public comment? All right. Uh, we have in front of us uh, further comment. 
Yes. Sure. Just very briefly, Ellen Moradi again, Department of Finance. We recognize that these trailer belt proposals were submitted late, and we are um, just want to express our gratitude that you're willing to keep these issues open. All right. The assembly actions. Um, I have a request to split up one item out. So, uh, in front of us on page 23, uh, the first motion. On, on the assembly actions, we will adopt uh, all of them with the exception of the fourth item, which is the reduction of funding for the San Joaquin Valley. So it would be one, two, three, five, and six of the bullets. And do you want a separate action on, Catherine, separate action on the hold open? Just leave it. Okay. So those are the items we need to take action on. Bullet one. Two, three, five, and six. Is there a motion? So move. All right. It has been moved. I, um, I had one question. Yes. I don't know if Go it's ahead. directly it's related to the May revision proposal mm -hmm. on page 24. Just at, um, if uh, uh, on the new solar home partnership program, the CEC actually agree with the BIA, not all the time, oh, but yeah. they've got this right. The CEC can get the money out of the door and by putting it back into the California Solar Roof Initiative, it goes back to the utilities, mm -hmm. which uh, hadn't been doing as good a job. So when, when through the process could a minor tweak be made in any of this? Is it, it's open for conference committee? Is that Part of the discussion, or what happens there? Or does it require a bill, or what? It's going to require discussion with the governor's office. On the new all, solar all homes? Three, all three. All three. But they're they're not they're not directly connected, but they're three separate programs yes, as part of the May revision. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, the Energy Commission certainly knows the governor's office, so mm -hmm. you may want to. Take that cue. All right. Um, so we have a motion for the first, second, third bullet, and fifth and sixth. Please call the roll. Senator Wolk. Aye. Senator Nielsen. Aye. Senator Pavley. Aye. All right. All approved three to zero. The fourth bullet is to reduce the funding for the Valley to implement the Perea bill uh, from 500000 to 250000 per the LAO recommendation. Is there a motion? So moved. All right. Been moved by Senator Pavley. Please call the roll. Senator Wolk. Aye. Senator Nielsen. No. Senator Pavley. Aye. All right. That is approved two to one. I believe we are at the end of the agenda. All right. We are adjourned. Interesting.